All right, folks, uh, let's talk about what took place in Texas. Beto O'Rourke, a former U.S. congressman, is running against a Republican incumbent, Greg Abbott. Beto, of course, he's brought that lead down. Abbott was leading by double digits, and now down to uh, less than five points. Uh, O'Rourke has been traveling all across the state, speaking to voters, and, and he really uh, took it up a notch after the Uvalde shooting that left 19 kids dead and two adults. He is, remember, he, remember, he confronted uh, Abbott and the others at that news conference, and he has been very clear on the campaign trail where he stands on this. So, so last night, he had a couple of Abbott people who rolled up to his event. So imagine some MAGA people rolling up to a speech that I gave or to a lecture from Greg, from Greg or to an event Reese or Erica had and they said something, this is how the reaction might go down. I'm gonna make sure that now 11 weeks since we lost 19 kids and their two teachers shot to death with a weapon originally designed for use in combat, legally purchased by an 18 year old who did not try to obtain one when he was 16 or 17, but followed the law that's on the books, ladies and gentlemen, that says that you can buy not one, you can buy two or more if you want to, AR-15s, hundreds of rounds of ammunition, and take that weapon that was originally designed for use on the battlefields in Vietnam to penetrate an enemy soldier's helmet at 500 feet and knock him down dead up against kids at five feet. It may be funny to you, motherfucker, but it's not funny to me, okay? that they don't have to worry about somebody walking into their school with a weapon like this, that we take common sense steps, we find the common ground, Democrats and Republicans, gun owners, non-gun owners alike, and make sure that at a minimum, we raise the minimum age of purchase from 18 to 21 for an AR-15, that we have a universal background check for anyone who wants to buy a gun in the state of Texas, and then we have a red flag law. So listen, if you have that firearm, as this young man did, and you are threatening to kill people so bad that his friends, so bad that his friends called him the school shooter before he ever walked into the school and shot anybody. Listen, we've had five of the worst mass shootings in U.S. history in this state in the last five years, just under Greg Abbott. Now, you either accept that we are inherently evil and violent and deadly and love to kill each other and slaughter kids where they sit, or that there is something that you and I can do together, regardless of the differences between us. That's where I am right now. Well, now, Reese, he let it rip. <laughs> Well, sometimes you got to call a motherfucker a motherfucker, okay? That's just what it is. When people can feel sensitive. But if you feel sensitive, maybe you're the motherfucker. And that's why you know <laughs> with the language. But you can also not be the motherfucker. That's a personal choice that people decide to make. Don't shoot the messenger, okay, on that one. But I like Beto. I like his energy. Chad, I don't know what it's going to take down there in Texas, for people to be fed up with being the mass shooter capital of the country. And I will just say this, I'm gonna drop this in my book, The Long and Short of It Guide to the 2022 Midterms, The Radical Republicans. I did drop that bit of knowledge about how Texas is the home of the largest, five of the largest mass shootings in the five years, all under Greg Abbott. So th they can do something about it. They can do something about it in Texas. I think Beto is an exceptionally strong candidate. And some Democrats across the country could get a little bit more of that Beto, or as some might say, that Reese energy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Erica? <laughs> That's right. That's Reese energy all day long, and it translates <laughs> across uh, all platforms. So get into it. 
Um, but I also think that, you know, looking at the crowd, that it was people that looked like the people that were in the crowd that were heckling the folks that were there to disrupt. And there needs to be more of that, and it needs to be mm. a lot more aggressive, um, especially when you see that people are showing up, don't know if they're you know, paid actors, um, because they were definitely cho- um, accusing Democrats of, of being that. So don't know if they're paid actors, don't know, you know if they got a coin or not for showing up, but like these people are showing up and disrupting um, a town hall or his, um, a stop on his stump. With him, with him talking about 19 babies that were slaughtered. Um, so it shows you really kind of the force that all of us collectively are dealing with. So in terms of Beto, I think there's some other candidates uh, that are running that could really engage that Beto energy, meaning they're going out. I'm talking to you, uh, Chris, who's looking to um, try to gain Florida again, but kind of that momentum, that level of energy going out, stomping and not depending on black and people of color um, to fill in the gap for the vote. So good for Beto. Hey, Greg, I had no problem when he charged them on that, on, when they were on that stage in Uvalde, calling them out. They were talking about, oh, you, you stuck. No, that, that is the energy you need. People want to see fighters. Uh, and the bottom line, what Greg Abbott has done to my native state uh, is shameful and despicable. Uh, and this is exactly how Beto should be running, calling these people out to their faces and not playing nice. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. I agree with everything, uh, Reese and Erica, that you all have said. Um, you know, we, we want to think that society is organized around law and respect for the law and their common values and morals. But that's never been true in human history. And it's least true in this funky ass place. And certainly in a place like Texas that never wanted to be part of the United States, as our brother Gerald Horn had reminds us over and over again, the energy there organized around hatred displaces any notion of the law. And you know, I know we didn't get a chance to talk about that Virginia case, but you know, when you got a federal judge still protecting these pattern rollers with federal uh, with with qualified immunity, we have to remember. And I was just reading this new law, law review article out by Alexander Reiner, who's at Cornell this year, uh, usually at uh, Cardozo School of Law, where he says, you know, Section 1983, 18, 1983 in the Civil Rights Act, di- it ex- explicitly said that qualified immunity would not extend. This, this has been basically mm-hmm. a uh, judges deciding that they just mm-hmm. don't like civil rights laws. And so what we saw there are people who have just decided, damn the law, damn humanity, you know, we don't care. We want power to go to your original point. So when Beto said what he said, we've seen this show before. This is the energy we all have. The only question in this funky ass place is... <laughs> When will you reach your limit? See, mm. Beto O'Rourke is trying to deal with civility. And, you know, as a guy, uh, Alex Zemelin, who has written a book called Against Civility, saying that civility is what allows whiteness to continue. In other words, y'all laughing mm. at babies. Motherfuckers should mm. be the least. Mm. Excuse mm. me, young boy. I'm getting ready to have you join those children so you can talk to them in the ancestral realm about why you shouldn't have been mm. laughing at them. Why? Because that's going to be the, that laugh is going to be the last expression of breath out of your lungs. You see, mm-hmm. most of us won't do that because we'll say, OK, no, we got to be better than that. But the when you finally reach that moment, see, Beto O'Rourke, when he said, motherfucker, he crossed a bridge. You understand? Yeah. And he didn't just cross a bridge there. Reese, like when, when, when you let us have that language, it empowers some of us who wanted to say that anyway. And you're going to get a few more people mm-hmm. saying, when Beto O'Rourke says yeah. that, Erica, I suspect you're right, says it's going to be some other candidates get their wind out from under them. I ain't never going to cape for Cheney's daughter in Wyoming because mm. it's too much blood on her, her family's hands. However, Period. as she has said, I don't give a damn about this congressional seat. Why? Because she understands the criminal enterprise that has allowed her family to excel is getting ready to end. She's going to risk it all politically. Well, guess what that's doing? That is beginning to embolden some other people. That motherfucker is funny. It's certainly cathartic, but it's also a signal, as we have seen them in previous times in American history, that people have reached a point where these laughing motherfuckers mm-hmm. are now going to get got with. And there is there are more of us than there are them, of all colors, of all class, yeah, of all yeah. background. And the minute we say, oh, 
Oh, it's on? It's on now. Oh, mm-hmm. let me crush their asses. Do you understand? And I think right. that's what we saw. Beto had enough. He got children. You laughing at this shit? You lucky I don't beat your ass in here. Mm-hmm. And if you beat your ass, Period. he might win the, won the damn election yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He might have. That might have been what it takes. No question. Hey, I, yeah, I, that's I, the I, word. I, I keep trying. I keep trying <laughs> to tell people. Uh, bottom line is, when stuff gets serious, man, we ain't got time to be playing these games. And that right, folks yeah. who are definitely playing games, they think this is funny. No, ain't no laughing matter when 19 kids are slaughtered right. and two that's adults. That's right. No, nah, ain't no laughing matter. All right, folks, back to that whole unfiltered video in just one moment. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe. We all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. I'm real um, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? 